Hey guys, Alex here. Welcome back to my channel. In today's vlog, I will be breaking down the assumption process of Jay Brown. This is for private listings that have already been fully paid, but the title has not yet been transferred to the owner and is still under the developer. So if you're thinking of acquiring a property in Savior Estates or maybe Teakwood Hills that is in this situation, then check out this video. But before we begin today's vlog, I have a small request. 80% of the viewers of this channel are not subscribers. So if you're not a subscriber yet, please do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. It helps this channel out tremendously because the bigger the channel gets, the more people I can reach, the more people I can help. Now let's get back to the video. With our listings in Savior Estates or Teakwood Hills, we have properties where the unit or the property has been already fully paid at A. Brown, but the seller has not yet transferred the title to their name. So one reason for this is because many clients are OFWs and sometimes they don't have the time to follow up or check on the title transfer process. So I just recently closed two lots in Ventura Residences with the exact same situation. And since I noticed that I have been explaining this process again and again, I thought why not make a comprehensive vlog about A. Brown's assumption process so I can just send the vlog next time to my clients who are sellers to watch or also to buyers. So this way I'm sure that I won't be missing out on any detail. And if my clients have additional questions, then we can just sit down and have a discussion. Okay, so let's say the buyer has already seen the property, made an offer, and the seller has accepted the offer. What's next? The A. Brown assumption process consists mainly of four steps. First is due diligence plus tax computation. Second is route the property for takeout. Third, reserve the unit. And fourth is close. So step number one, due diligence. Once both parties have agreed to close, the first step is for the broker to do due diligence. I have a full vlog about this. I'll link it up in the card above. I'll also drop the link in the description box so you can check it out after this video. Part of doing due diligence is to request for the following documents. At the ROD, request for a certified true copy of the title. And at City Hall, request for certified true copies of the tax declaration of the lot, certified true copy of the tax tech of the building if it has a house, certificate of latest and existing, certificate of no improvement, this is for lots only, and tax clearance. Additional documents to request are latest OR on Say Hi Juice and latest OR on utilities if with house. One common misconception that lot owners have is that they don't need to pay HOA dues since they are not yet using their lot. But that is not the case because once the property has been turned over to you, then you will need to start paying monthly dues. In fact, even grass cutting is not free. Like for example, Savior Estates HOA charges 500 pesos per grass cutting. So HOA dues can be paid on monthly, quarterly, or annually. For us living in Savior Estates, we pay it on an annual basis because it's just more convenient that way. Now let's go to the tax computation. What are the taxes that need to be paid upon transfer of ownership? Let's say the property you are wanting to buy is a lot located in Ventura Residences with a lot area of 110 square meters with a selling price of 75 per square. So total contract price is at 825,000. So you will be paying the following taxes. So the first tax you'll need to pay is the capital gains tax. This is at 6%, about 49,500. And then documentary stamps, that's two doc stamps at 1.5%, so that's at 12,000 each. And then transfer tax at City Hall, estimate is at 0.5%, that's about at 4,000. And then transfer fee at ROD, estimate is at 1.5%, so that's at 12,000. Now these are just estimates, ROD actually has its own matrix, so you will know for sure once it's computed by ROD, but it will not go beyond 1.5%. It's usually below this percentage. And then Sadula, that's at 825. Total for the taxes and fees is about 91,000. And then we have fees payable to A. Brown, the developer. So A. Brown has a redocumentation fee at 5,000. A docs cancellation and reissuance fee that's at 1584 And then we have Abron processing fee. So the processing fee is usually the same amount as the reservation fee when the seller reserved that unit. So before, the reservation fee was only around 25000 per lot, but it has since gone up. So if you are buying out a unit that was recently purchased, then the reservation fee should be around fifty to 100000 per unit. And then Abron also has a takeout fee at 12500 So 10000 is actually refundable 
upon title transfer to the buyer's name. And then notarial fee, usually the tariff of attorneys is at 1 to 3%. So I computed it at 1%. It's at 8,250. If you notice in the computation, there are two doc stamps tax. This is because the first sale has already been registered at BAR, even if the title has not yet been transferred to the seller's name. And A. Brown will also need to pay EWT, which is at 3%. Now, regarding the takeout fee, it will only be paid if the buyer will decide to take out the title and do the transfer themselves. Usually, I recommend that you do the transfer yourself because if you were going to let A. Brown process it and transfer the title to your name, it will take years. So it's much faster if you do it yourself. And then we have processing fee for the title transfer, which is what you will be paying to the processor who will do the title and tax declaration transfer for you. This is only optional because you can opt to do it yourself or hire someone else or have your staff do it for you. The next step is to route the documents for takeout. So once my clients have agreed on a selling price, I will immediately inform the Abraham Marketing Department of the pending sale and request for the document to be routed for approval. They will compute the tax payable. It's basically the computation that I just showed you above and also request for the title to be prepared for release once all documents have been submitted. And then step number three is to reserve your unit. So the next step is to have the buyer reserve the unit or give earnest money deposit. The purpose of reserving the property is to lock in the deal while due diligence is ongoing and while both parties are waiting for the closing documents to be prepared. Reservation fee will depend on the seller, but usually it's a lower amount than the earnest money deposit. Earnest money is about 10% of the total contract price, while standard reservation fee is usually about 100,000. This is non-refundable, but deductible from the total contract price. It's not an amount that the buyer can easily walk away from, and it shows that the buyer is sincere in really pursuing the transaction. At the same time, it's not such a huge amount that it would be hard for the buyer to produce on a moment's notice, since usually by buyers will already have at least this amount on hand. During this stage, the buyer and seller will sign a reservation agreement, which is usually good for 30 days. This is not a fixed time frame though, as it can be changed. It can either be less than 30 days or more than 30 days, depending on the preference of both parties. But usually for reservations, 30 days is the standard because of it, it's not too long and it's also not too short. So within this time frame, the seller can no longer offer the property to other interested buyers and the buyer must then pay the balance within 30 days. Now, one thing to note with Abron Properties for Assumption is it cannot be financed by the bank since the title, even if it's already fully paid, has not yet been transferred to the seller's name and it's still under Abron. So there are only two possible financing schemes for properties under Abron, and it's either cash or deferred cash. So when it comes to lots in Savior Estates, cash is the main payment term preferred by the seller because lots here are very much in demand so that even if our listings here are cash basis only, they still get sold quite fast, usually in under three months. And then step number four is close. So once due diligence has been completed and the closing documents are ready, then we can close. For closing, the buyer and the seller will usually meet at a predetermined place, usually the attorney's office. Sometimes it's in a coffee shop with the attorney present. There are three documents to sign during closing. First, we have the deed of assignment and transfer of rights which is a document that you can get from A. Brown. Deed of absolute sale, which is internal between the buyer and the seller. Acknowledgement receipts of payment made and the documents received. Other documents to prepare are two valid IDs of both the buyer and seller and SPA to sell or buy if applicable and also the TIN verification slip. Now, what is the Deed of Assignment and Transfer of Rights, or the DOA? This is a document from Abron that basically transfers the rights and ownership of the subject property from the seller to the buyer. You can request this template from the Abron office. I also have this template, so let me know if you need a copy so I can email you one. Once this document has been signed by both parties and notarized, this will be submitted to Abron along with the rest of the documents. Then the buyer needs to pay the appropriate fees to A. Brown. So again, let's review the fees payable to A. Brown. Redocumentation fee, 5000 Documents cancellation and reissuance fee, 1584 A. Brown takeout fee, 12500 A. Brown processing fee. 
So for the A brand processing fee, the amount, as I mentioned, will depend on the reservation fee the seller paid upon unit reservation. Standard A brand reservation fee is between 50 to 100,000 or even up to 150,000 per unit depending on the project. As for the takeout fee, I also mentioned that this will need to be paid if you opt to do the title transfer yourself. The 10,000 is refundable by A brand once the title has been transferred to the buyer's name. A Brown will then process the assumption and then they will execute a deed of absolute sale between A Brown and the new buyer. So this usually takes around one to two weeks. The deed of assignment is the document that needs to be signed since the property is still under A Brown, then the seller cannot execute a deed of absolute sale. Once submitted to A Brown, they will be the one to execute a deed of sale to the new buyer. Once the deed of sale between A Brown and the new buyer has been signed and notarized, then the buyer can then take out the title for transfer to his or her name. So again, the four steps for A Brown's deed of assignment are, first, due diligence plus tax computation, second, route for takeout, third, reserve the unit, and fourth, to close. And that's it for today's vlog. If you have any questions on the deed of assignment process, then send me an email so I can get back to you on this or comment down below in the comment section. And if you want to be updated of the latest pre-selling projects in Vismin, send me an email so I can add you to my mailing list.